It's Thursday night, race time. When I select the route sometimes, I look at them, I think it'd be nice to do a longer race this week. And then every time it comes around, I regret it. And I'm definitely feeling that today, especially being a bank holiday uh, and we're off work here in the UK. 30 kilometer, very flat route. It's the Greater London Loop. So yeah, it's slightly longer than what we normally would do. My legs are hurting. We went to Legoland yesterday, really kind of feeling that today. And we've been out most of the morning as well, just doing family stuff. So my legs are hurting. I've got a slight twinge in my knee that sort of came out after the FTP test. And I'm just hoping that doesn't get any worse. Uh, I'll see what it feels when I'm pushing, you know, putting out hard efforts during the race tonight. I don't know whether I'll stay with the group all the way through Tuesday Trundle after the uh, the Monday night FTP test that I did. I struggled to keep up and I didn't keep up. I had to drop off. So I don't know how this is gonna go. Uh, got everything set up. I'm gonna jump on now. We've changed the start times for the riders. So the Ds go when it hits zero. They've now got a two minute head start over the Cs. They now get a half, one and a half minute head starts over the Bs and then another minute to the As. So let's see how it goes. All right, I've had a nightmare start to the race. Just as we were about to go, my camera cut out. I just had to try and reconnect it on the go, which meant I missed the start. I had to put out a big burst to catch this group of Ds. She's a relatively big group tonight, which is awesome. But uh, yeah, now just trying to sit in and recover a little bit if I can. Um, let's see how it goes. All right, we're just coming up to that incline now. It goes up to the, the circuit. This is where I could have done with saving all that sprint for, because I'm likely to be gapped a bit here. I'm trying to put as much effort in as I can to try and stay in the group whilst we get up here. Come on. All right, well, I managed to stay in with the group, just about. So in this group, we've got A. Evans, M. Blundell, R. Prince, I. Davies, L. Warrior, DC Marks, and then we've got the C's catching us, already bridged over 30 seconds of the two minute gap already. All right, just crossing the line then, to start the first lap. Two laps, 23.3K to go. Still in with the group, just, I'm definitely feeling this in the legs though, no doubt about it. So the C group have just clawed it back to a minute. Normally they would have caught us by now then. They've done really well, considering there are what, four of them. That's an awesome effort. And it will be two minutes, 10 back. Keep an eye on them, see if they're closing the gap. My bar at the bottom is only blue, uh, grey zone. I don't know whether that's right or not. I think that grass slightly off. Either that or this is feeling a lot more difficult than it normally does. <laughs> All right, 17 minutes in, the DEC group has caught, well, I closed the gap to 44 seconds. Still, it's just about staying in with the group. I am struggling tonight. I definitely don't feel strong like I did in recent races. Still got 18.7K to go. It's just gonna be a battle to get to the end at the moment, but let's see how we do. Come on. All right, 20 minutes in. The gap's at 30 seconds. Passing under the Union flag banners. And we're about to go up a little bit of a climb. Not a climb, but you know, just a small, long one, two percenters that leave me blowing out the back. So let's see how we can do. That gap is coming down rapidly. Let's see. I see Jay Kerr. Looks like he's already caught the bees. A minute and a half. Uh, it looks like he's in with the bees who are about 40 seconds uh, behind the seas. So we're all gonna converge at some point, no doubt about that. Still got half, still got 16K to go. Still a long way. 
No, just going underneath this uh, underpass. And on the other side is the uh, horrible little slope upwards. You can see my power is already getting spiky. Oh, I've got the A's and the B's about to come through now. There they go. Caught us in under a lap. I'm just trying my hardest to stay in this group up this climb. All right, I've managed to stay with this group. Jay Kerr, Jay Guthrie, Ben Slevin. Oh, gone up up front. Jonesy's has gone as well. DC Marks has pulled a five second lead over the rest of us. D's. And we've also got the C's breathing down our neck now. Eight seconds behind. So, I'm going to have caught us within a lap. I wonder if any of the C's can go with them today on their way through. I know for sure that I can't. That is 100% certain tonight. All right, just crossing over to start the second and final lap. C's three seconds behind. They didn't quite catch us before the end of the first lap. I'm saving that feather. No, I need it on one of the little hills. 11 and a half K to go. Come on. Here are the C's then. Flying through Pete Davies. DC Mark's up in the power to try and stick with them. I can't see everyone there. Jay Robinson, a lot of the D's trying to stick on. I better go for a, a bit, I guess. Try and get some toe. Well, I did manage to catch them. It took a big effort to do so, though. <laughs> this is uh, this is more difficult in different in a different way to the normal races. I just don't feel like I've got the the energy or the just the the legs for it tonight. Oh, if I can stay with this group for as long as I can, then I will turn into a relatively big group. Craig, DC Marks, I Davies, J Robinson, A Evans, R Elsden, L Warrior, R Prince, K Pilkinen, uh, P Davies, 12 seconds behind, C Waring, B Cap, 30 seconds to bridge, and then C Swan, a minute 13 back. Oh, I think someone's made a move off the front here. I think it's K Pilkinen, and uh, See Finlayson stepping it up and a few others now to go with them. It's just strung the group out. And uh, oh, you can see my power now. The, the graph is definitely not right, the colours. But uh, I'm just putting out a burst to try and catch on the back of the group and then trying to coast a bit because I don't have anything else. We just don't have it. Not tonight. It's no good. I had to put out another big effort to catch up a minute ago. And yeah, this time I've got away from me and I can't, I can't keep up with them. Oh, we've got C wearing behind 24 seconds. P Davies 39. C Swan closes out to 106. Oh. Yeah. After the recent races, it is slightly disappointing. I do feel I was going to struggle a bit. I mean, as I mentioned before, I still feel twinging in my knees when I push hard. But uh, yeah, I'll ride around for a little bit, see where I am, and then maybe jump around and see the finishers. 6.5 to go. I'll jump forward to watch the front of the race. Still a little way to go yet. But Jay Guthrie, Jay Kerr, and then Slevin all together out front. Got a 52 second lead over Jonesy, who I think was a bit closer to them a minute ago. And then a minute back from that, Jay Robinson, C. Finlayson, M. Blundell, R. Prince. That's all of the group that I was with before I couldn't go any longer. Group of C's and D's. Great effort for the D's to stick onto the C's again. And, uh, I'm going to watch these guys over the line and watch everyone else finish. It'll be good. All right, just going up this incline. Jay Kerr is putting in some effort here. 7.5 watts per kilogram. 
Jay Gosby is trying to make his way up to seven. And I think Noel has thrown in the towel and trying to stay with the A's. They've got a few kilometers to go still, but now uh, breaking away on their own. Just the two of them, it'd be great to watch the sprint for the line. It's two minutes back to the, the group behind Jonesy. Here they come then, turning for the line, and John has gone for it already. Uh, John Kerr, I should say. John Guthrie trying to keep up. The numbers going up 13 watts per kilogram. Who's going to get there first into the last few hundred? <laughs> oh, big numbers. Big numbers. Turn the camera. There we go. John Kerr has got the lead here. It's going to take some big effort. I think he's done enough. Great effort. Let's uh, go back and see Noel. Put a uh, 30 second gap between him and the guys at the end. It's still a great effort to stick with those A's all the way. Top racing. And we got a minute back to Jonesy. And there's a small group that's uh, appeared in the D group, in the D and C group. DC Marks and uh, K Pilkinen have got themselves a few seconds lead now over Jay Robinson and the rest of the group. Be interesting to see to jump back and see those guys. Noel is the next one to cross the line. Great effort. Jonesy will be next. Started with the D's. Usually a, oh, forgive me, a C or a B, I can't remember. Apologies, mate. Uh, Gonna be the next one across the line, recovering from an injury. There we go, Jonesy across the line. Let's go back and see the race that in front on, unfolds here. They've got themselves a 15 second lead now over the rest of the group. It's pretty good going. As they head down as well. Kay Pilkinen's gone for it early. I don't think, I don't think DC Marks has got, uh, got the power to react necessarily. Unless he's saving it. That uh, burst at the top of the straight <laughs> might have been what grabs the next spot. Yep. K Pilkin and next over the line. Then DC Marks. Let's look back to the big group behind. See who's going to get this one. So Jay Robinson gone out slightly ahead. Let's jump back in the group. Let's see it from. Craig's point of view, the Jay Robinson is going to take the next position and there's a sprint, is there? M. Lundell, A. Evans, L. Elsden takes it over Craig, that was a rubbish camera angle and Craig just pooping over the line. Well, that was a rubbish camera angle to see that I'm afraid, sorry everyone. Uh, and I've got L. Warrior the next over, then C. Swan and P. Davies will be next, sorry. Rubbish. I couldn't, with all that ticker tape on the screen, I couldn't see where the, the mouse cursor was. Oh, rubbish. Let's see, Swan will be next. Then P Davies. And then me. To trundle over the line. In the last place. Awesome racing, everyone. Still sprinting to the line. Love to see that. Great effort. On a TT bike. Uh, I'm going to poodle over the line. Uh, we'll catch up after. Let's have a look at the results then. So I've got Jay Kerr in first, just beating Jay Guthrie to the post, 45-55. That's the two A cats coming in first and second. So awesome catching, especially given a, a bigger gap this week. <clears throat> N11 in third, who was up there with him until the last few kilometers. Jane Jonesy in fourth. Uh, Kay Pilkinen and DC Marks came around that corner together and Kay Pilkinen putting the push at the top to take it in 48-58. Seventh, uh, this is the group that, that kind of all came around together. A. Evans takes seventh, just on the line. Look how close. A. Evans, M. Blundell, J. Robinson, I. Davies, then R. Elston in 11th, all with 49-20 something, and they're not far behind. Craig in 12th, R. Prince, just a split second behind Craig again in 13th. And then back to Seat Waring, 49-29. L Warrior, 15th. C Swan, 
in 16th, P Davies 17th, and then me all the way back in 55 minutes in 18th. Poor, as I said, I'm not going to keep harping on. That was not, I just didn't feel that. I still feel the FTP effort in my legs. I struggled with the trundle on Tuesday night, and I really struggled tonight. So I guess I've had a, a few strong races in a row. It's a shame that I couldn't continue that form, but uh, it is what it is. Whew, I'm going to go and have a shower. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up in a bit. I am a little bit disappointed with my performance in that race. I just didn't have the legs, uh, especially after the last few weeks of races that we've done, I felt quite strong. So to kind of, I knew it before I started and I guess that's the mental side of it and being defeated before you start, but I just didn't have the energy. And that comes on the back of quite a few busy days that we've had as a family. It's been half term here in the UK. So we've been to Chessington Wild of Adventures. We've been to Legoland. We did, I've done some stuff in the garden. I've put some fencing and stuff up. We've been out days of shopping. I just haven't stopped and sat down. I'm used to sitting at a desk most of the day in my day job. So I have felt quite tired. And then following the race on Thursday, I went, uh, we decided to go up to London yesterday on Friday to go and see what was going on for the Jubilee. My daughter has never been on the underground. She was desperate to see Big Ben uh, from her days back in nursery when they did some studying about London. Uh, and uh, she's always wanted to see Big Ben, but recently obviously it's been covered up uh, and they've taken the covers off. So we thought we'd go up and see the Jubilee stuff and, and you know, take on the underground and do some other bits and bobs. So today, <laughs> Saturday today, I am feeling very, very tired. But I did the ride this morning, the bandy group ride, and I actually felt quite strong on that. So it seemed to have got my legs back a little bit, but just had a lot of very busy days, making full use of some time off over the half term period, which has been awesome from a family point of view, from a mental health point of view, just getting out and doing some, some fun stuff. Just very, very tiring. Let's talk about weight loss. And there wasn't any this week. And I'm not, I, I was a little bit down about that. It's basically stayed the same. And one thing I've been experiencing on, experiencing on keto is it stays flat and then all of a sudden you get a drop and then it'll go up and down a little bit and then it'll drop and then a little bit along and it'll drop. It's sort of, sort of seven, eight, nine days before you see a drop. So I'm a little bit disappointed not to have lost anything on Thursday, but I'm feeling so much better. I say that I'm tired after going out on all those family days. I'm not as tired as I used to be. I'm not feeling absolutely exhausted towards the end of the day and desperate to get home to sit down. I do feel like I've still got energy. Today, I was I was listening to some music bouncing around in this room before the group ride because I just felt really good. I've got my um my belt buckle now has gone up another, you know, in another couple of of holes and stuff. So I feel it I, I felt it more this week without seeing it on the scale. So I didn't get down too much. And hopefully it will drop off for next week and uh, we can continue the weight loss journey. There was the video from Wednesday about my, my keto FTP ramp test. Uh, it generated lots of discussion in the comments about the keto diet and about the FTP ramp test. And I think I didn't really necessarily appreciate that there would be a, probably because of the title of the video, some newer video, uh, viewers to the channel that maybe don't know my journey and I probably could have been a little bit clearer in that video. I don't even know if those people will watch this video now, but I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. I'm following the keto diet to lose weight. That's what I'm doing it for. And that's working. You know, as I mentioned, 20 pounds already over six, six and a half weeks is brilliant. The test wasn't to see if keto has improved my cycling. I wasn't expecting that to happen at all. In fact, I was expecting my cycling to go backwards. What I wanted to do is test to see how far maybe I'd gone backwards. Uh, I, I guess with recent good performances in races, maybe I wasn't expecting it to go backwards too much. Um, and the reason I chose the FTP test is because I've done them before. So it was a simple way of testing my current ability against my previous abilities. I understand that there are limitations to an FTP ramp test and maybe it overestimates, maybe it underestimates. But as I said, it was this was just to compare me to me uh, to see if I've gone backwards or possibly forwards in any way. I think it's also important to note that I'm not an elite athlete. I'm not, my goal right now 
is not to continue to increase my FTP. My goal is to shift the weight and then see all the benefits that weight loss will bring to both my cycling and my general life. If I can end up in a position where I shift this weight and my FTP stays the same, that is that is like the goal. If I can achieve that, I I will be ecstatic. Um, and I, if I can, you know, people have mentioned in the comments about losing muscle mass and stuff on a keto diet. I understand that M my gains are going to be much more from losing the weight. My FTP, my uh, watts per kilogram will increase dramatically more if I shift the weight than if I put a couple of watts onto my FTP. So that's my goal, lose the weight to get the benefits cycling or otherwise. Anyway, I think I've waffled on enough for this video. The links to this week's ride are all in the description below. If you fancy supporting the channel, head over to Buy Me A Coffee. Again, the description in the link below. Uh, thank you to all of the channel members on Buy Me A Coffee and on YouTube. If you have enjoyed it, do hit like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. I was a little bit disappointed not to have the legs in that race, especially given the last few, I'm gonna sneeze. I'm a little bit disappointed with my, uh, oh, uh, oh. turn it off.